Hey everyone, it's Jamie from Independent Street Tarot and Seasons and Ritual, and I'm here side by side. Hi. With it's Helen. Been a little I while. know, yeah. the Crimson Cadaverous. This is nice. It's it's nice. Also, it's weird because the sun's going down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Happy fallback. Yes. Okay. Everyone's very happy they got up early. I wonder why you got up early. <laughs> that was funny. You yeah. That. Okay. Okay, friends. So we are in Scorpio season. Um, this is the week of the 6th through the 12th. Yep. Um, Monday. Are we going to have a big week this week before we get started? Of course we okay. are. Okay. Yes, of course we are. We're, we're in the land of big weeks. Big weeks. That's just the age of big weeks right okay. now. <laughs> okay. Monday, we start off with the moon and Leo. Yes. And what would you like to talk about on Monday? Um, I personally feel like not so much what's going on with the moon, but what's going on with Venus and Mercury. Uh -huh. Ooh, Venus and Mercury are going to be the stars of this week. Just, okay. you know, spoiler alert. Okay. You know, we got a lot going on with Venus and Mercury. Okay. Um, but starting off the week, we've got Venus trining Pluto mm -hmm. and Mercury trining Neptune. Okay. So trines are 120 degrees away. Mm -hmm. So um, very harmonious, mm -hmm. um, same elements. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Venus and Pluto are in Earth signs mm -hmm. and Mercury and Neptune are in water signs. Yeah. So again, we are continuing all planets and feminine signs mm -hmm. moving into the week. Yes. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get out of it. Okay. But, um, so we've got Venus training Pluto. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Venus is how we find value, how we find beauty in the world, you know, our defined feminine. And Pluto is our inherent truth. Right. You know, the truth that may be hidden to us, but mm -hmm. that, like, deep, dark, you know, truth that we got to dig for. Right. We got to get in there. Th then we find it, we're like, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think with Venus, you know, trining Pluto, it's almost mm -hmm. like finding beauty in that, mm -hmm. finding value in that. Right. You know, the things that come up, like even if it's something we go, Shit. you know, yeah. like really, is that really me? All right. Well, yeah. let's find some beauty in that. Yeah. And also I think it's important because this um, Pluto has turned direct mm -hmm. in Capricorn. And so this Venus in Virgo um is bringing you like a little bit of softness to that. Yeah. Yeah. Because Pluto, like you said, is water. Um, I mean, rule Scorpio, which is water. Yeah. Um, and Capricorn is earth and Virgo also being earth. Um, I, I still, like you said, it's like bringing a little bit of um, nurturing to this. Yeah. Because Venus, I mean, because Virgo wants to like get it done, you yeah. know, and Venus is like, okay, let's, how can we do this? Yeah. Maybe in a more nurturing way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How can we, you know, get it done, you know, make sure we're being valued. Yeah. But... Yeah. Oh, we were just talking about values. Yeah, exactly. I'm you, before we started this, yeah, okay. Yeah, you got to be valued. you got to be valued. Yes. And then Mercury and Scorpio. Yes. Trining mm -hmm. Neptune. Um, you know, so Mercury is the mind, communication. Um, Neptune is all the things we can't, you know, put our finger on. All right. those things we just know, the intuition, the, yeah. the whole. And like, as you say, and you always like um, say Neptune is that higher octave of Venus. Yes. Right. And so we have Venus and Virgo trining that Pluto and Capricorn, which is um, that transformation. And Mercury, who's in Scorpio, mm -hmm. right? Talking Scorpio is water. Right. That is ruled by Pluto. Right. Right. And it's trining this Neptune in Pisces. So again, I'm trying to make sense of something that's a little bit of intangible, but it is this new conversation. Right. Because Saturn just turned direct in Pisces. Um, Neptune, which is that higher octave of Venus. Um, so an, a, another way how we, how we feel about ourselves. Right. Um, in its home sign of Pisces. Well, Mercury is going to be able for us to like maybe put some words to this, right? Yes. Words to this transformation. Words right. to like why it's time to get get her done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because Whatever again, be. Neptune tends to be intangible. Yeah. And you know, if anything, Mercury is going to help us like concretely explain something, understand something, yeah. find the words for it. Yeah. That like with Neptune, we're just like, I just know it. I don't really know why. Feels good. You know, yeah, just or know feels it. bad. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And so I think starting the week off with that, like again, Mercury and Venus, we're gonna see them show up a lot this week. Yeah. But um I think starting the week off with that is great because it's yeah. like, you know, we're kind of, it's almost like we're kind of getting our mind right. Yeah. But it, not in like a violent shove. Right. Because these are trines. Right. These are just kind of like the universe just kind of rocking us. I mean, right. Like, wouldn't you rather do this? Right. It's How about you do this? It's kind of like the energy, like if you live, live in a neighborhood that you love 
and like you know your neighbors across the street are like awesome you like wave at each other yeah and, you know like maybe you'll get to talk to them later but it's like that good energy oh totally even though you don't know exactly what's going on but that's how I see trying energy. Yes, yeah. definitely. Like, it just feels like it flows right, mm -hmm. even if you don't have all the answers. No. Yeah. And this moon in Leo, right, the moon is how we intuit. And mm -hmm. so um, Leo is the, imagi that, the ima is imagination, the spark yes. of um, getting things done, like lighting yourself up. Yes. Right? So that is also, it doesn't have to be um, super fiery. Yeah. But, you know, it is like this idea, like to get some, not, what's the word I'm thinking of? Not imagination, but how you start yourself up, like inspiration. Um, yes. That's the word I'm thinking of. Inspiration. Yes. So, yes, inspiration. What's inspiring, what's inspiring you to move in a certain way? Yes. To speak a certain way, to see yourself differently. Yes. That is that, um, to me, that moon in Leo. Yes. And then we have the moon move into Virgo and then more of that Virgo energy to yeah. like resolve things, get things done. Right, so let's go ahead and move into, and the moon will move into Virgo, I guess, towards the end of the day. Yes. And then, so, Tuesday, we have the moon in Virgo. And let me just interrupt everybody. Here, I'm doing a moon motivation class. Mm. I sent yes. the wrong email out about it, but that's okay. Yeah. Because sometimes shit happens. We'll get there. Right, so, um, but we'll be working with the moon more in depth in this class. Um, so, sometimes we talk about, when we talk about the moon here, uh, we will definitely be talking about the moon in that class. Uh, nice. And how to work with it, so. Yes. Be look out for that, or if you just follow me on Instagram and YouTube, I'll put up some more stuff about there it. There you go. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, Tuesday, Moon and Virgo. Yes. Okay. So, Moon and Virgo is interacting with the um, couple dynamic of Juno and Jupiter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we always, I, I think it's always important to remember that Juno and Jupiter in mythology were husband and wife. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, Juno has been relegated to, you know, being not even a full planet right right you know, yeah. so um don't know why she didn't get a full planet but jupiter did we won't get into that right right we'll save that for another uh, discussion but mm -hmm. i always find it interesting when they're kind of playing out in the same day because mm -hmm. like it's husband and wife yeah so on tuesday we've got the moon in virgo mm -hmm. you know doing the resolving getting the things done mm -hmm. conjunct juno so they're together yes so juno's in virgo yes okay and then trining jupiter Okay, so Jupiter is 120 degrees away. Yes. Yeah. So playing with the, you know, husband-wife team and, you know, Juno rules, our commitments, mm -hmm. the things, partnerships, the things that we're, you know, mm -hmm. um, fully entrenched in, so to speak. Yeah. And Jupiter is our enthusiasm, mm -hmm. our ability to look at the big picture. And if this mm. is all, this is a trine with Jupiter and a conjunction with Juno. So mm -hmm. it's like all very favorable energy. Right. And it's like allowing us to kind of see this big picture of the things that we've committed ourselves to or mm -hmm. want to commit ourselves to, to really be like, is this really honoring me? And that's what I was going to say. So I would always see them, this is more like, you mean you're saying husband, wife energy, sure. But also like masculine, feminine energy. Yes, that too. Yeah, just like from that. So and them working together and then us realizing how they can work together yes more easily and then we show up as ourselves as the i am yes. right it's just showing up and then working together because virgo i like virgo virgo used to be very tough yeah yeah um the virgos um when they stay present and they're grounded right and if she's conjunct juno who is um the feminine sign mm -hmm. Uh, Hera. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and she rules that relationship. So it's like, okay, how are we relationship with us? Right. And then training Jupiter, mm -hmm. who is, how are we going to get this move forward? Yep. And can we do it like in a grounded way? Because Jupiter is in Taurus, mm -hmm. Earth. Juno's in Virgo, Earth. Right. Right. So it's kind of keeping us grounded in this way. Like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, we can show up and get this done. Yeah. I and like Jupiter is going to definitely keep us faithful and optimistic. Yeah. You know, whatever, whatever we're doing, whatever yeah. we're changing. We got, we got this. We got yeah. this. Yeah. So let's start feminine mask and say like, we got this guys. Exactly. We could do this. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Moon and Virgo will also be sextiling Vesta. Yes. And, and the, the sun. sun. Okay. Yes. So again, a lot of favorable energy on that day. Mm -hmm. So a lot of like just easy flowing things. So it's going to be the last day mm -hmm. that we have all the planets in feminine signs. Okay. So if we get this easy, supposedly easy right, free right, flowing right, day, right. let's, you know. And you guys all text me later and be like, oh, it's proud of you. Yeah. My whole life fell yeah. apart. Okay. Yeah. Um, Oh, we have to do... This is Tuesday. We, you said Gregory Scott said right. Tuesday Gregory was a good day. Right, Gregory said it's a yeah. great day to get shit done. But so, let's do it. It's also a really great day to just receive. Yeah. Like, and I think maybe that's the how we get shit done, mm -hmm. is we actually just receive. 
And there's a lot of action in receiving. Yes. You guys, like I know we yes. always think like we have to be moving. But if you allow this new energy to move through you and you allow these new messages to come in. Yes. Yeah. And I think that might be the whole message maybe of okay. this like time period where we had, you know, the planets and all these feminine signs mm -hmm. and it was just like fully entrenched in there. I think the whole message was to like, I don't want to say force us to learn how to receive, but kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's definitely been a lot of messages that have come through about like, nope, you just have to let this come through. Yeah. Because. You don't have to do anything with it. You just got to let it come through. Yeah. Because we do feel kind of bad we yeah. know when things aren't coming through. Right. Or like, if we're asking yourself like, why does my life look like this? Right. Well, you need to get some new answers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wednesday, Moon will still be in Virgo. Yes. All day. Yes. Okay. And really, again, Venus and Mercury, mm -hmm. you know, we've got... They're back, baby. Yes. Mm -hmm. I told you they were going to be very present all week, and we're going to see quite a bit of that still, but mm -hmm. we've got Venus entering Libra. Mm -hmm. Who who rules, who rules Libra, by right. the way? Right. So going back into her home sign, mm -hmm. you know, getting out of Virgo where she's kind of a little, eh, uh -huh. you know, she's a little too picky in that side. Yeah. Um, moving out of Venus, or moving out of Virgo and into Libra. Libra. Then we also have Mercury mm -hmm. sextiling Pluto. So again, Venus and Mercury, you know, those first two planets. Yeah. Like really doing the work, you know, this week. Yeah. And, and Mercury is in Scorpio, you guys. I can't stress this enough. Scorpio is fixed water. Mm -hmm. um, water is our feelings, right? Yeah. So we really, I mean, just this constant, there's a constant reminder of like, how are we feeling? How do we need to change these feelings? Mm -hmm. How are we yeah. nurturing ourselves? Are we actually talking about the feelings so that they can right. move through us? In us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or are we just hanging on? Right. And that, it's sextiling Pluto and Pluto is transformation. Yes. Okay. Changing the narrative. Right. And it's Pluto's in Capricorn and Capricorn is Earth again, mm -hmm. you know, so it is really changing like you said, the narrative and what we thought was probably what we thought was our normal narrative. Yeah. Like what we thought was our stability. And it's right. like, actually, no, it's not. Oh, yeah. that was extremely unstable. Well, I also want to say it's a sextile. So again, it's easy flowing energy. Mm -hmm. Like the narrative can just change. Yeah, it really can. I know like, we think like, no, it can't. No, it really can. Right. And I think that's the thing. Because, okay, so we've got the Mercury sextiling Pluto, so mm -hmm. it's like changing the narrative. Mm -hmm. But then we've also got Venus being the planet to break all feminine planets. Right. But still being the feminine planet going into our home sign. Right. So it's like... She's still, the feminine still in charge. Right. Yeah. So feminine is still in charge. Mm -hmm. Which is our feelings, you guys. Which right. is creativity. Yeah. Right. Still in charge, but finding some balance with that. Right. So like we're changing the narrative... And then we're like, oh, there's some balance now. Right. Because oh, I've good. changed the narrative. Weird. Yeah. I don't just keep telling myself the same thing that makes me go, ugh. Yeah. I yeah. feel gar garbagey. Or right. this doesn't make any sense. Right. Exactly. Everything's supposed to be working together to make sense. Even if for a slight moment, maybe it doesn't. Because right. that's bringing in that Piscean energy. But yes. um, again, Saturn turned direct in Pisces. So then it's right. all going to start making more sense to you doesn't you don't necessarily have to make it make sense to others no okay thursday the moon in virgo will then move into libra yeah and guess what she'll be conjunct venus yeah so venus right. goes into libra first and like come on and the moon's like hey girl okay. right and they get in there and i think that's really interesting because all the moon really does besides mm -hmm. move into libra is form a conjunction with venus mm -hmm. and square vest on that day no oh, that's good and mm -hmm. to yeah. me i feel like that is saying you know we're coming back home to our values mm -hmm. like we're you know coming to them mm -hmm. but also we are challenged to only devote ourselves to what we really value right because to really truly just be like all right i don't really care you know i don't yeah. value this so i'm not going to keep putting my energy into right. it because vesta is our home flame vesta is our what we value well, our spirit yeah right? like our spiritual side um the vestal virgins mm -hmm. um all those things but again it's that divine feminine yes and so the moon moving into Libra and just meeting up with Venus and giving her a high five. And then she's squaring Vesta and yeah. asking, okay, how are we divine? How do we keep that in balance? How yeah. can we, like we're talking about valuing yeah. things. Like, okay, how do we keep that in balance with what we truly believe? With where we're aligned with ourselves yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So, hey, it's going to be a big week. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're only halfway through. Okay, Friday, friends. Yes. So moon and Libra. Opposite. Mercury definitely. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Go I was going to say Moon and Libra opposite Chiron. Yes. Okay. 
That's that is important. Yeah. But again, Mercury star of the day again. Mm -hmm. um, Mercury's entering Sagittarius, dun, and then dun, dun, dun. right afterwards squares with Saturn. Okay. Um, and again, if we think about Mercury being the mind mm -hmm. and communication, and Saturn is structure and stability, mm -hmm. and it's like the square is like. Where has your, neighbor, your narrative been faulty? Yeah. Where has it, you know, ha has the story not been filled out? Right. Where where has it not been practical? Right. Right? Like, I mean, listen, I cannot judge anyone's life, okay? Because, <laughs> no, I can't at this point. Okay. Like, if there are things that I did, I look back and I was like, how did I think that was good? How did I think that was practical? Yeah. At the time, it seemed like it. So, whatever. Fuck it. But, Mercury... <laughs> Okay, entering, um, I mean, Mercury squaring Saturn um, is, like, that conversation. Oh, yeah. Like, and, like, and Saturn not being, like, um, rude about it. Right. But just being, like, that's, that's not going to happen. Well, and you know what I almost see it as? Mm -hmm. Because Mercury is going into Sagittarius. I almost yeah. see it as, like, being a joke. Like, you just, like, laughing about, right. like, why yeah. have I been doing this? Right. Just like Why have I been saying this? Why have I been thinking this? Yeah. It's almost, like, because, laughable. Yes, it is laughable. it is so faulty it yes. is so you know not the right just not right okay i like <laughs> sagittarius is a fire sign mm -hmm. okay it is um cardinal yeah right so it's this no mutable sorry mutable sorry 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 i said i thought mutable first and i was mm -hmm. like that's not right so it's mutable so it's moving in it's moving us into this new energy so and it's jovial like we yeah. say like it's ruled by jupiter um and so mercury enters in there and it's just like Okay, we can laugh about this. Yes. Like, it's okay. Like, we really thought this was a good idea. And I'm trying to think of, like, I don't know. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But, like, I mean, a lot of things we've done in our society previously yeah. seemed like yeah. a good idea. Okay, right. And then we're just like, no. Why have we all been doing that? Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I definitely see a lot of, and especially if you really lean into this energy, I see a lot of just, like, laughing at ourselves. Yeah. Like, I can't believe I've been doing that. I can't right. believe that's the foundation I built whatever on. Obviously, Hair, it wasn't yeah. going to work. Like, we can think of, like, hairstyles, like, um, yes. fashion choices. Right? And I'm, like, thinking, like, these light things, but, like, right. but it's obviously other yeah, bigger things. Yeah, there could be a lot of things. It yeah. could be big and small, in between, yeah. whatever. I think, I just see us laughing a lot, though. Like, yeah. just, like, almost, like, kind of, I can't believe I did that. Right. Or I can't believe that. Or that was right. time in a bottle. Let's right. move on. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not going to be sustainable moving yeah. forward. Okay, so Saturday... 11-11. The 11, 11 portal. Yeah. Okay, baby. So I'm really excited about that one. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like... The moon is in Libra. Yes. And then it will move into Scorpio at the bottom, at the end of the day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, but before we do that, Scorpio's mm -hmm. yes. ruler, Pluto, mm -hmm. uh, we have a square with the moon. Okay. So moon and Libra squaring um, Pluto. Yes. still in Capricorn. Squaring mm -hmm. Pluto. Mm -hmm. Opposing the North Node and Eris, mm -hmm. so that means conjunct the South Node. Mm -hmm. um, and the South Node, you guys, is what we're leaving behind. Yes. Okay. And that South Node um, is in uh, Libra. Libra. Yeah. So we're leaving behind. I mean, to me, the most obvious thing everybody keeps saying is people pleasing. Yes. Which is like just yes. Yeah. Yes. You know. It's true. I mean, not to say we don't do that every single time. You know, the South Node is in Libra. <laughs> But it's just coming more apparent. It's we're, becoming we're feeling more comfortable apparent. with ourselves, like, oh, I don't right. have to show up in that capacity. Right. Yeah. And if while that's happening, we also have a square with Pluto, which actually keeps let's let's also remember this keeps happening every month. Yeah. You know, we're in this time now with where Pluto is, you know, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, that that's gonna happen every month when the moon gets into Libra. Yeah. Um until Pluto moves into Aquarius, then Scorpio. Then all hell's yes. yes, breaks loose. Um and a good, and a good way. Right. Okay. But because of that, so like every time we get that moon into Libra trying to balance us out, mm -hmm. we've got that square from Pluto kind of not balancing us right. out. Right. Kind of like, <laughs> like scraping it, it out. Yeah. Yeah. Saying, okay, you keep trying to balance, but what's still not right? Right. What right. still needs to be done? What yeah. still needs to be dealt with? Mm -hmm. What still needs to be looked at? What, yeah. You know, whatever. What still needs to be transformed? Right. I think that's the most important way to say it. Yeah. And again, we've got now, we'll also have the oppositions with the North Node and Eris at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. So with that, you know, that's telling us like, okay, so what can we see so we can move forward? Right. All these things that aren't balancing out, that need to be dug up, but what yeah. can move us forward? 
with Eris, what can be removed? Right. What can be disrupted so that we can move forward? Right. And that's going to keep coming up for us every month when we have that configuration with the moon in Libra. Okay, that's good to know. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it, and I don't say that in a daunting way, like right. this is going to keep happening. No. But like every month we're going to have that opportunity mm -hmm. to balance ourselves out, to release, you know, the people right. pleasing, but by meeting certain things. And do you know what I think is funny too? Is like you're saying like this is going to keep, you know, coming back around in Libra, right? Is the moon is in Libra, which wants balance, right? right. So it is us like showing these patterns. Mm-hmm. Which, if we start recognizing these patterns, it will hopefully bring some more balance into yes. our life. Like, okay, this is coming in again. How do I see it differently or look at it this way instead right. of always being blindsided? Well, and this particular day, mm -hmm. I feel like, is going to be really powerful mm -hmm. because Mars is opposite Uranus. Yeah. So Mars is our power planet. Mars, and Mars is our is motivation. In, and Mars is in Scorpio, you guys. Yes. So he's it, at home. Yeah. He's at home. That's That was Scorpio's... Um, original ruler right which i also find very interesting yeah i think i like because it. because mars you know they always say like when mars gets into other water planets he's at his detriment yeah but yet he was the original ruler of scorpio which right. is fixed water yeah, mm. I yeah. Know, I okay okay it. but also to me it also says that mars was at a the beginning a little more emotional yes he was yeah. more in touch with his emotions right. than now yes yeah. of course and then pluto came in and took that scorpio yeah. away you know yeah yeah but yeah, so Mars is being our power planet, mm -hmm. opposing Uranus, and it's like the power to see the changes right. that need to be made, and like truly see them and go, okay, I, get I can it. do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, because again, we've got you know this kind of like T square thing happening with the Moon mm -hmm. and you know Pluto and North Node and stuff, like just trying to like clear things away. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we clear all these things away. We can move forward then. Like, what's keeping us from moving forward? Right. Yeah. Mars is in fixed water and Uranus is in fixed Earth. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is that is a powerful opposition, yeah. right? To bring in the good. Right. Right. And let the other go. Like, Mars and Scorpio. I get Scorpio, you know, transformation, feelings, you know, all those things. Fixed water and Uranus and Taurus. And Uranus has just been churning Taurus, mm -hmm. churning up the earth, right. you know, making it more fertile. Right. Right. So it's almost like Mars is looking over there at Taurus and saying like, okay, where is, where can we plant these new seeds? Right. It's fertile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, I just, I keep hearing power to transform. I love like we it. actually have the power and we've always had it. Yeah. It makes you feel good. Always had it. Yeah. And but something about that energy is almost going to be like, you know, we can't deny that we have the power anymore. Right. And it's on the 1111 portal. Everybody. Yes. So that's I, I really think it's good. And like, again, I'm going to say if things are intense on that day, lean in. Yeah. Lean in a hundred percent. Lean the fuck in because it's intense for a reason. Yeah. And like. Take notice of what's intense, what feels right. intense, what needs to be changed, where your thinking is changing, mm -hmm. how you feel creative, yeah. you know. Um, if your body is feeling creative, if there's things in your body that you're feeling that you forgot you could feel, okay, yeah. that's Mars and Scorpio, right? It's us getting back in touch with ourselves, yeah, right? And then, and then Uranus and Taurus being like, oh, I feel grounded in this power that's coming up in my body. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. I love it. I can't wait for the love of <laughs> I know. I'm okay. excited about it. Okay. Then we end the day um, on Sunday. The twelfth, where the moon in Scorpio, yes. and that is moving into our dark moon. Yes, that's moving into there because thirteenth is when I have my class. Yeah, that's when the class starts. Right, it yeah, starts the 13th, on the dark moon. Monday is the new moon. Yeah, so yeah, so keep yeah. that in mind. Yeah. That like we actually don't have. It's interesting how things fell. Mm -hmm. We don't have any full moon, new moon, quarter moons mm -mm. this week mm -mm. because it's like one falls like right before, one falls right after. So like it was helping me out in teaching this class about the moons. Right. Right. So we just had to just be. A yeah. normal moon week. Yes. So then I can talk about first quarter, last right. quarter. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But Thanks, Spirit. Again, when we get to that point, and especially because the moon is in Scorpio, yeah. when we get to that point, that very, very, very last little bit of, you know, the moon before she starts again, mm -hmm. um, that's the cleanse out period. Right. That's the, that's the rest. Right. And that's the surrender period, too. Right. right. You know, like where we just let things go, we let things flow out, mm -hmm. and like... We take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if we have an opposition with Jupiter on that day, okay, yes. that's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Because Jupiter's coming in again, being yeah. jovial, yeah. and just being like, all right, yes, you know this what, is all very you know intense, but it's going to get great. Yeah. This reminds me of like, um, 
like if you went out drinking with your friends and you feel like complete dog shit the next day. Yes. And you can't do anything but lay and laugh because you can't really remember, but you knew you were a fucking idiot and maybe yeah. You yeah, that's what that that's what that's that energy. Yes. Like that was such a bad idea and then you just like laugh about it like yeah. oh my god, how did we live? But you did. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? You're living it. Yeah. If you're so, watching this, you're living it. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Okay. Also on Sunday, the moon in Scorpio will be sextiling Juno. Yes. Who's still in Virgo. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then trining Vesta. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, again, that's some like really nice energy to work with, with those uh, smaller planets yeah. where we've got Juno and Vesta, mm-hmm. that strong feminine energy that, you know, wants us to commit to what we really want right like what actually you know where do we want to put our devotions yeah and again it is on that dark moon which means you can't see the moon so again it's a time of rest and quiet right. so just let the things yeah. go in right ruminate with this stuff yeah there's not doesn't have to be any um action yeah okay well it seems like a good week yeah i think yeah. it's gonna be a great week of course a big week Remember, a big you know, if we're working this much with Mercury and Venus, yeah, it's like things, to me, I always, like, the, those planets, we're doing a lot in our personal lives mm-hmm. on those, during yeah. that time period, because they're the personal planets. Right. So it's like, it may not be this, like, you know, looking at the big world thing. It's right. more about focusing on kind of what's going on around us think, in our own world. And I think right now this is really important. Like, the main thing that keeps coming through, honestly, is focusing really intently on us. Yes. And these a personal lot going planets. On. Yeah. There's always going to be a lot yeah. going on. Yep. There's always something to distract you with. Yes. And this is a good time, like the manifestation and, and all these times. It's like really um, strong right now. Right. So, so if you're interested in learning more about manifestation and working with the moon, <laughs> sign up for my moon motivation class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like my segue. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you guys can sign up. If you guys have questions, just reach out to me at Independent Street nola at gmail.com and i can answer those questions i'm going to put a couple more videos up about it um, but it's going to be a online class um, and you will get prompts um, each day or not each day but every time the moon moves into a new um, sign and we will work with uh there's a car trying to get out of the driveway over here yeah Uh, we work with uh, some energy if it feels stuck okay we'll help work with that um, but we'll, we'll learn a little bit about Scorpio because we are in Scorpio season um, and how we can work with our intentions and manifestations with the moon. So, Sounds fun. Thanks. I think it's going to be a good time. Yeah. Okay, guys, till then, if you, have, if you want Helen to do uh, your cards or your birth chart, you can always reach out to her via Instagram. <laughs> um, I, good luck. I don't know what happened. Um, Instagram or if... Um, <laughs> If you need to reach out to me, you guys know how to do that. We're just going to end this because there was a hot. Yeah, there's okay. just some trauma going yeah, on with somebody yeah. else. Okay, till then. See you guys next time. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs>